So I have just transplanted a few tomatoes outside. Now I don't normally grow them outside, I normally grow them, grow them in the greenhouse, but these were grown in the conservatory and as you can see, there are white fly. Um, not as many, because a lot of them have flown away, but I didn't want to contaminate the greenhouse. So I actually haven't grown tomatoes outside before, so I'll be interested to see how these do. I also need to get a couple more stakes because there's a couple of leggy plants in here that need staking. Um, and you can see there are quite a few white fly around on this leaf. Uh, they don't like it outside as much because they don't really like the breeze. Um, so obviously when you're in a greenhouse or a conservatory, it's ideal conditions for them. Um, you can use a fan to help kind of dispel them a little bit. But it'll be an interesting uh, experiment to see how these tomatoes do out here as compared to the ones in the greenhouse over there. Um, so we'll see how we go. And uh, I'll just keep these really well watered. Squish the white fly when I can. You can see quite a few coming off there. If anybody's got white fly solutions uh, or ways to get rid organically uh, without chemicals, please let me know. Well, you saw this little chick start to hatch last week, and I promised an update. And <laughs> if I can get it on film, the pheasant chick has hatched. Now, the one thing with pheasant chicks I've learned is they are scatty. They are not like little uh, chicken chicks that will sit in your hand. Little pheasant chicks are mad. And I guess they've still got that inbuilt natural behaviour in them. In the wild, if a predator came, they would scatter and find their mum later. So here it is. It's very cute. Uh, we're calling her Evie. We've no idea whether it's a boy or a girl. But obviously we lost Eve, so we really could do with a girl. So we're being optimistic and calling her Evie for now. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed that it is a girl, but she's doing really, really well. Um, later in the week, we will have some quails hatching. She's been calling quite a lot. So while she is a chick, I may put the baby quail in with her as well, just so she's kind of got some other chicks to be around. Um, she is too small to go in with the chick chick chicks and the guinea fowl, because they will just mob her. Um, but you can see she's slightly nutty. Hello. Hi. So uh, yeah, we'll keep. I'll keep you updated on her progress. And there's another two Reeves chicks in the incubator as well, both fertile. Um, uh, eggs, sorry, Reeves eggs in the thing in the incubator. They're both fertile, and we should have some more. Any luck in about two weeks' time? So I wanted to catch you up on that beautiful little splay-legged budgie chick we had earlier in the year. And as you can see, he's still alive. He's a beautiful yellow face, and it is a he, because he's got this beautiful blue sear. And he's got the yellow face, and then he's got all of this gorgeous blue colouring. Now he is a bit more splay-legged, as you can see there. His legs are sticking out, but he gets around fine. Uh, he's also got this spangle wing. Um, and I'm holding it as you should hold budgies if they're not tame. So the two top fingers around his neck so he can't bite and he's safe. And then the rest of his body in your palm. And that just means that he can't flap, he can't break his wings or anything, flutter away. And you've got him securely. I would like you to see him properly though. So what we'll try and do without him flying away is pop him on top of this cage. And then you can see him. Now don't fly away mate. But just calm down. So here he is. He actually flew onto this little perch. You can see obviously his legs aren't proper and they are still splayed, but he gets around perfectly fine. And he's a lovely little chap, aren't you? So I thought you'd like to see that little update of him and how he's doing. I'm gonna pop him back in there. You can see actually the three from the first uh, clutch behind him, so that's Sunny uh, right behind his shoulder, the yellow one, and then the three yellow and green ones are her first clutch. So let's pop him back in with the others. So I thought we'd have a quick update on the cut flower bed, and I have to admit, slight failure on this because it just hasn't really happened how I hope. Now you can see obviously the off um, Ophiopogon, Osteospermum have come out nicely and we have got some of the little citrus 
marigolds coming out down there. Um, in terms of the zinnias, a couple are just starting to bud, um, but I've lost a lot, I'm afraid, due to slugs. There's another one here. Um, one thing I am happy with is the delphiniums. So these are forgotten delphiniums that I forgot were in my greenhouse. And look at that, isn't that pretty? And obviously this is their first year, so they would normally be growing to three, four, five foot tall. This is barely a foot off the ground. But the fact that it has survived the slugs, I am just happy with that, because I normally lose all my delphiniums and lupins to slugs. So I've got that one, and then I've got another one down there that's starting to come out. Uh, this Verbena Bampton is starting to flower again. It's not a cut flower, but it is very pretty. And I really like it against that brick wall. And then the other thing that has survived are these dahlias. So I've got one dahlia there, another here, and another here. So these dahlias obviously will be late summer flowering, but they will fill this area with some bright colour. And something I didn't plant this year, but obviously it fell into the ground from last year's, was a sunflower. So we have a sunflower coming up as well. So it's not um, really how I wanted it to be, but nevertheless, it will look quite pretty once it's all out in flower. And you can see Adam there in the background running up and down. So obviously last year, as you know, Eddie, Ethel and their two little ones, the, the girls, got nabbled by the fox. Um, and this was the sole egg I managed to save and hatch, so this is Eddie Jr. And he's grown up to be a rather nice cockerel. Now, I haven't got any hens yet, sadly. Um, God knows where he's going. Oh, he's going onto the lettuces. Okay. Um, but he has, as you can see, grown into a very nice cockerel. So I will be uh, persevering this year to try and get some more hens or some hatching eggs or something to pop with him because I want to get my Ixworth flock back and now I have Eddie Ixworth Jr to carry on that bloodline. You can see his saddle feathers are coming in, he's a beautiful uh, white colour. The only thing is his personality wise he's not the same as Eddie. Eddie was very nice, we come up for a cuddle, no aggression at all. Um, Eddie Jr, again no aggression but shy, shy and timid. Uh, so we need to work on that. But um, he's good friends with Barry. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited again about this Ixworth flock. I just need to make sure that this boy is kept forever safe. Why are you only showing us your bum bum? There we go. So last time, for the first time ever, I managed to successfully grow both aubergines and sweet peppers. This year I've got them on top of the uh, quail coop. Um, in the hottest area and the sunniest spot of the garden. And they're currently in quite small pots. I will be upgrading them to larger pots um, in time. Um, probably double that size. So it's a more of a container garden. Obviously at that point I'll have to move them down because they won't be able to be up here. And I'm feeding them with a tomato feed twice a week. And it's seemingly doing the job. Now they did get some bad white fly uh, from being in the conservatory, um, which is why I kind of moved them up. But actually, as you can see, the leaves are kind of, apart from this leaf, they're kind of clear, but there's still a few white fly around, as you can see on there. Um, so the aubergines are slow. They haven't started to flower or anything yet, but the peppers, are starting so you can see in the crown of the pepper plants we've started to get some some flowers so I'm very excited this is a uh, California mix so it's California sweet peppers and there's a couple of um, chocolate peppers in there as well so and they seem to be doing really really well the peppers in particular are doing really really well so I'm hoping for a good crop this year well, I am ending the week on another hatch. Uh, so these guys are due to hatch today. So these are my quail. We've got a fair few in there. As you can see, the incubator is full. Um, we've got no big holes yet, but we do have pips. Now, obviously, to the untrained eye, it's quite difficult to see. Uh, but the one there in the middle of your screen has a pip on it. Uh, the one now to the right-hand side of your screen and to the left-hand screen also have pips. So we've got about five pips. Um, at this stage, as I say, it's very hard to see other than there's a slight crack in the shell. 
for those of you who are very keen eyed uh, the egg that is in the middle of the sh uh, middle of the picture there uh, it's got those two large splodges if you look dead on top and there's a tiny little round dark blob that's another spot and then through it you can see a very faint line that is actually a crack so the the first pip they normally make this kind of slightly triangular pip and a pip uh, triangular crack on the shell and you can just very so faintly see it here um, but yeah so over the next few hours hopefully we will have baby quails again and I'm hoping for a decent uh, decent hatch this time I did a float test throughout the eggs that I didn't think were any good and I put in the eggs that should be due to hatch however there is a bad smell so one of those eggs has definitely gone uh, off um, but I obviously can't open the incubator now to check because we are in mid hatch but it's a good way to end the week with the promise of new babies Thank you.